Welcome back. In this video, I want to go through word problems um, that have a context with them. So you'll see four different word problems in this video, and we'll go through our strategy for setting up each one. So in the first one, it says that balsa wood sticks are commonly used for building models. A 48 inch balsa wood stick is to be cut into two pieces so that the longer piece is three times the shorter. Find the length of each piece. So my goal here is to find the length of each piece. And if I read through, I do see that the stick starts at 48 inches, right? That's the total. It's going to be cut into two pieces and there's going to be a longer piece um, that is three times the length of the shorter piece. So my goal here is to find the length of the two pieces. Now for right now, I'm gonna label them as longer and shorter. So I have the longer piece and I have the shorter piece. So those are the two things I'm trying to find. Now remember our goal helps us to figure out our variables. I do have two things here, but I don't wanna use X and Y because that would be much more difficult to solve. I'm trying to keep it to one variable if possible. So a nice tip is to read through again and to kind of see if there's a variable that um, appears to sort of be like the main focus um, or the unknown appears to be the main focus. So and I'll show you what I'm looking for. So I'm looking at this line here. It says that the longer piece is three times the shorter. So that shorter piece is sort of the main unknown and I can write the longer piece in terms of the shorter piece. So I do know extra information about the longer piece, but I don't know anything about the shorter, right? The longer piece is three times the shorter. So what would make sense here, because I know nothing about the shorter piece is to let that one be the X and then three times the shorter, I can write as three X. Now, the other thing I know is that these two pieces together have to add up to 48 inches, right? So I'm taking a 48 inch stick, you know, like something like this, this is 48 inches and I'm cutting it, right? And this could be my shorter piece and this could be my longer piece and this is X and this is three times X. So the total between these two pieces has to be 48. So what that means is that X plus three X has to be 48 inches altogether. Now to solve this, x and 3x is 4x. I can divide this by four and I have x is equal to 12. So if I think about my picture here, that would be the shorter piece is 12 and this is in inches. And then the longer piece is three times this. So three times 12, which would be 36 inches. I can also, if I didn't make a picture, plug in back here as well, right? X is equal to 12, and then three X would be three times 12, which is 36. So you can use a visual, or you can also just write out, again, what those two variables are. Now give it a quick check, does this make sense? Well, 12 plus 36 is definitely 48, so you can use your calculator to check that, so they do add up appropriately. Um, I do have a shorter and a longer piece, and the longer piece is definitely three times the shorter. So this actually looks great. Um, so the pieces are 12 inches and 36 inches. But notice again, the key thing here is I started by writing out some notes. What are the things that I'm looking for and defining which one is gonna be my variable. That stuff is really important. A common mistake here is a lot of students would just probably write the three X equals uh, 48 and forget to add in the extra X piece, right? Cause you need to combine both these pieces together to get that total 48 inches. So really take your time and you know draw pictures, take notes and think about what's going on in the background. All right. Another example, and this one is pretty wordy. So again, if you're writing it down, then pause the video here, you can write it down and come back when you're ready. It says there are approximately 900,000 different kinds of living insects in the world, but experts estimate the true figure may actually be between two and 30 million. In the US alone, the number of insect species is about 90,000. 
and the greatest number fall into two categories, beetles and flies. If there are 4,100 fewer known fly species than beetle species, and the total of these species is 43,300, find the number of beetle species and the number of fly species. All right, so here's my goal. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to find the number of beetle species and fly species. So again, I have two things here. So I have the number of uh, beetle species, and I have the number of fly species. And remember that this symbol here, that pound symbol or hashtag also means number. It's a shortcut for number. Now, if I read through again, I actually have a lot of extra information I don't need. So my focus here is just on the beetles and the flies, um, particularly in the US, right? That's what we're talking about here. So this 900,000 and this two to 30 million are actually irrelevant. I don't really even need them. Also, this 90,000 isn't even needed, right? Because it just gives me extra information. So what the key things I really need to know is that there are 4,100 fewer known fly species than beetle species, right? So beetle species are more than flies. And that the total of the two together is 43,300. Uh, 43, um, so let's read this through one more time. There are 4,100 fewer known fly species than beetle species. So for the fly species, there are 4,100 fewer um, than the beetles. So here, I don't really know anything about the beetle species. So I'm gonna let that be my X. I do have to be careful here, fewer than that word then is going to reverse the order. So I'm going to write this as X minus 4,100, not 4,100 minus X. The other big thing I know here is that the total of the two, so when I add these two together, I do get 43,300. Um, so the number of beetle species plus the number of fly species is 43,000, sorry, 300. So for beetles, I'm using X. For flies, I'm using X minus 4,100. You don't really need parentheses there. I'm just using it to show you the two different groups that I'm adding together. If I combine my terms, I end up with 2X and then minus 4,100. Oops, that a three. I'm gonna add 4,100 to both sides. You can definitely take out your calculator here. Um, what you get is 47,400. You can divide by two, and what I get there is 23,700. Now, the nice thing, again, about setting it up at the beginning is you you know exactly what X means, right? You're not at the end of the problem and then wondering, what on earth did I let X be? You already have it defined. So we said X was beetles. So there are 23,700 beetle species. And then for flies, we would do 23,700 minus that 4,100. And let's see, you get 19,600. So the number of beetle species is 23,700. And this is in the US. And the number of fly species is 19,600. Now you can check your work here. If you add those two together, you should double check that you do get 43,300 there. So you'd wanna confirm that that actually does add up correctly. Um, you could also double check your math here, make sure that 19,600 is 4,100 less than the number for the beetles. Um, so those are a couple ways that you can check this. Also, I got nice whole number answers, which also makes sense, right? I'm talking about insects. I shouldn't have fractions of an insect here or negative insects or anything like that. So it looks good and I feel pretty confident about this example. All right, my goal here is to show you just kind of a few different styles of problems. So there's so many different word problems that we can use um, 
hopefully if I show you a couple of different styles and that will help you when you do other word problems as well. And you can learn uh, tips and tricks that we used here. Um, Cause remember nothing's gonna be exactly the same. So you'll have to apply what you've learned here to different problems as well. So this one says, if the two walls of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington DC were connected, an isosceles triangle would be formed. The measure of the third angle is 97.5 degrees more than the measure of either of the other two angles. Find the measure of the third angle. Now you actually need some background information here. Um, so first of all, in an isosceles triangle, two of the angles uh, or sides as well are equal. Um, so two of them are gonna be the same. So for instance, if I draw a triangle like this, uh, this one, and this one theoretically would be the same. And then the third angle in isosceles triangle would be different. Um, otherwise, we would call an equilateral triangle, which means that all three are the same. The other thing you have to know is that in a triangle, um, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. Um, so that's a fact that, that again, you may not have seen it in a while, so it may have slipped your mind, your mind but it's kind of assumed that students know. Um, but your sum of your angles is 180 degrees if you've forgotten. All right, so we're trying to find the measure of the third angle. So our goal is to figure out particularly what is this angle here. Um, so that's my overall goal. Now, this one's a little tricky because you actually have two other unknowns that this question doesn't specify that you need to find. Uh, but you do need to find them in order to find the third one. And that's that you actually have to know what all three angles are of the triangle in order to, to answer this question. So we do need to also know what the angle is for the second one and for the first one as well. And remember that these would be the same or equal because we have an isosceles triangle. So this problem is tricky because it's only asking you to find the third angle and it's sort of ignoring the other two angles, but you actually have three unknowns here that are hidden because we don't know the angles of any of the three of them. So we actually need to find all three to answer this question. The other thing I know is that the third angle is 97.5 degrees more than either of the other two angles. So the third angle is 97.5 degrees more than um, either of the other angles. So what's actually happening here is our unknown is not going to be the third angle, although you could do it that way, it's just a little bit trickier, um, but it's actually going to be the first and the second angle because we don't know anything about those two. Um, whereas for the third angle, we do know that it's 97.5 degrees more than the others. So this is gonna be, I'm just gonna squeeze it in down here, 97.5 plus X. Now there is a van there, so technically the order does reverse, but with addition and multiplication, the order doesn't matter. So that's why I didn't necessarily switch this around, but you could either write it as 97.5 plus X or X plus 97.5. All right, so the tricky one here is, or I guess are the hidden unknowns. So even though the goal is just to find one of the angles, I actually have three things I need to find to answer the question. You also need to know a little bit of background information. So uh, if you see some geometry questions that you're not as familiar with anymore, so maybe you've forgotten these things from high school or from other math classes, um, it doesn't hurt to just do a quick Google search. You know, what does isosceles triangle mean? And then that will help you as well to answer some of these questions. Now, the last piece here that I do have to use is that these angles do add up to 180 degrees. Um, so your first angle plus your second angle plus your third angle would give you 180. Our first angle is X. Our second angle is also X. And our third angle is 97.5 plus X. Again, you don't really need the parentheses here, but it's just for me to show you the three angles that I'm adding. Notice also, I tend to like to write things in words a lot. If you haven't noticed, I'm a big writer for a math person because um, I think it helps me process things more clearly and stay organized. Um, it also helps too, because when I go back later on to study or to try to figure out what I did in that problem, I have a lot of good notes here and it will make it easier for me to follow along. 
If you skip these steps, um, I find that students tend to make a lot more mistakes. And then they also get confused along the way of what they're trying to solve or what, what they did in the problem. So I do recommend to slow down a little bit and you know write some of these uh, key details down. Now I'm gonna combine like terms and I have three X. And I'm gonna subtract that 97.5. You can use a calculator here if you are use, doing it by hand, just don't forget to line up your decimal points. Um, so there is a decimal after the 180. And let's see, I would get 82.5. I divide by three. And again, you would just use your calculator here. I already have it done. I get 27.5. Now, it doesn't uh, hurt to have a decimal for an angle. That's perfectly reasonable. My angle should always be positive, though. And if I fill this back in, the first angle would be 27.5 degrees the second angle, 27.5 degrees. And then the third angle, I would add that 27.5 to 97.5. And what I get there is 125 degrees. Now you can double check this. So first of all, I do have an isosceles triangle because two of the angles are the same. If I add up all three of these angles, you should get 180. So that's a really big check that you can do. Um, and of course, this one is 97.5 degrees more than the other two. So those are three checks that you can do here. And then the answer we're looking for is that the third angle is 125 degrees. All right, so my last example here is gonna talk about the idea of consecutive. It says some states have a single area code for the entire state, meaning uh, for phone numbers, right? So those first three digits of your phone number, that's your area code. Um, so for instance, um, you know, if you're in Massachusetts, it may be 508, it may be 978, et cetera. There's, there's a few different area codes in Massachusetts, um, but some states have just a single area code. So two such states have area codes that are consecutive odd integers. And the sum of these integers is 1208, and we want to find the two area codes. So that's my goal. Um, so I need the first area code, and I need the second area code. Now I know that they're gonna add up to 1208. Um, and all I know is that they're consecutive odd integers. I don't actually know anything else beyond that. Um, so what does consecutive mean? First of all, consecutive means in a row. So if you had consecutive integers, it would be, you know, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, right in a row. If we say consecutive odd, that would mean three, five, seven, nine, et cetera. Or if I said consecutive even, that could be two, four, six, eight, et cetera. But the idea of consecutive means in a row. Um, now here, because we're talking about odd integers, it means in a row for the odd numbers, right? So three, fives are one, three, five, seven, nine, et cetera, whatever those are. And you can see a pattern here. When I'm talking about consecutive integers, you can see that each of these is just increasing by one, right? Two goes to three by one, goes to four by one, goes to five by one, goes to six by one. If I look at the bottom two though, these are always increasing by two, right? Because we're just looking at either evens or odds. So you're always skipping one in the middle, right? Three plus two is five, plus two is seven, plus two is nine and so on. So the way that you set up consecutive numbers is you let the first one be X, and then you let the next one um, either be x plus one or x plus two, depending on the pattern. Because we're talking about odd integers here, I would use x plus two for my pattern. Um, and you could keep going. If I had a third area code, I would use now x plus four. I'm using a plus two idea each time because it's just odds. So that two would then get added with another two to be four and then six and then so on. Um, if you're just doing regular consecutive, it's x, x plus one, x plus two, x plus three, and so on. So those are the patterns that you're using there. Um, and I know that the sum of these is 1208. So the sum 
is equal to 1208. So the first number plus the second number is 1208. My first number is x. My second number here is x plus 2. When I combine like terms, I get 2x plus 2. I subtract 2 from both sides. And I divide by 2. And I have x is equal to uh, 603. So the first value here is 603. And the second value, I add 2 to it. So 603 plus 2 is 605. Notice that they are consecutive, meaning they're right in a row. They are odd. If I add these up, I do get 1208. So this looks good. Um, and these are my two area codes. Um, as a side note, 603 is the area code for New Hampshire. And 605 is the area code for South Dakota. Um, now, again, as we go into the future, this may change, particularly with cell phones and, and more people having numbers and things. Um, but New Hampshire is 603 um, and South Dakota is typically 605. So there's your two, there are your two area codes. Um, and the big thing here is the idea of consecutive. So learning that that means in order. Um, and then for variables, we typically start with X as the first one and then use the pattern to find um, any, any after that, the second or the third or so on.